mandate of this church, praise God. And I thank God. One day, Vera called me years ago. And she said, Pastor, what, what's the vision of the church? You remember that? The other night she called me, she said, because I want to know. I guess God was speaking to her, telling her she needed to write it down and need to become a frontman in her life and she needed to put it before her so she can know how she wants to orchestrate her life because she had a desire to work in the ministry. Amen? And I went back, amen, and I, I said, you know, where, where did I drop the ball at? Amen, because I blamed myself, but the mandate was different. We, 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 we said we're going to train up the body of Christ, right, to witness, right, to a dying world, right, to, to experience change in our community. But you remember we used to use the three E's? Anybody know what the three E's were? We had three E's. Anybody know what they were? You're probably five, but I know. But it's three words. Exalt, edify, and evangelize. Write those down. That's the mandate of the church. That's what God wants us to do. Any biblical church, the church that's going to be spotlighted by heaven on earth are doing these three things. They are exalting God upward. Somebody say, exalt God upward. Exalt God upward. The Bible says, Psalm 34, verse 3, verse 3, O magnify the Lord with me. It lets me know that the writer of this psalm said, I'm going to magnify him already, but I want you to magnify him with me. So we're talking about setting the culture Praise God for a move of God in our service every week. So what have we been asked to do? We've been asked to exalt the Lord and magnify the Lord. What does that mean? Put our focus and our attention. Singleness of vision. Somebody say singleness of vision. Singleness of vision. Somebody say singleness of purpose. Singleness of purpose. Praise God. He says, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I say this to those that are in Bible study. I say this to those that come to discipleship class. I say those that have, have carved out time of their life to say, I'm going to go and seek God's will for this church, me individually and me corporately as well. So God said for Temple Worship Center, this is what we're doing. The culture we're creating is a culture that magnifies the Lord. God needs to be put in his proper place. So when people come in the door, they'll know it ain't about what we got on. They know it ain't about the cars that's on the parking lot. They'll know it's not about the pastor. They'll know it's not about the praise and worship team. But they know that people in there are magnifying somebody they can't even see. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. They, they magnifying the Lord in that place. Those folks are excited about somebody that they can't even see. And that opens the door for us to tell them about who we magnify. Amen? So I'm talking about this culture that we want to create here. We're going to get to the ministry of reconciliation, but understand this. God wants us to exalt upward. A threefold church exalts God upward. Psalms 34 and 3. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us adopt his name together. So now from the front door to the sanctuary. David said, I was glad to me. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. He was glad because he knew something was going on inside of him. He was glad when somebody mentioned church. We need to get to that place in our life. We want to get that culture set in our life in us. Secondly, second reason is what the church is supposed to do. So the purpose of the church is the first is to exalt God upward. The second reason that the church comes together is to edify somebody to say inward. 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 How are you built up? You're built up in the inside. A lot of times people, it kill me when they get in the weight room, they're lifting weights and they're looking, they're lifting this way, but they're looking in the mirror. And they're looking in the mirror because they're trying to see their guns build when they should be looking forward, not knowing they're setting off another neural response. So every time they turn their head, then their body responds and there's another neural call and they're not getting everything that they can get for their biceps. That's why the Bible says go forward. Don't look to the right hand or look to the left hand because now you're pointing some attention to other places in your body that don't need to be getting the attention. In Revelation, right out of anatomy. Amen. Amen. So we edify inwardly. Somebody say upward, exalt upward, edify inward. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 11 and 12. And he gave some apostles. And he gave some prophets. And he gave some evangelists. And he gave some pastors. And he gave some teachers. Why did he give them? Remember we're talking about edification. For the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. That indicates that churches should be doing some work. So as we work. We edify the body of Christ. Our work. Is reconciling the world back to God. But our work is first of all to recognize that we've been reconciled back unto God. Amen? Amen. 
and we've been given the ministry of reconciliation. So when we're in church, we're being built up. We're being built up on marriage. We're being built up on being single and saved, but still satisfied and still strong. We're being built up on how to be men to treat women the right way. We get built up. Everything is supposed to go down right in here. Somebody say edification goes on inside. Edification goes on inside. Amen. Inwardly. Everything you do. People can lift weights all they want. Drink all the protein shakes and creatine they want. If they don't work out, I mean if they don't if they don't eat the right thing nutrition wise, their body is not gonna change. So it tells me everything on side, inside. Is what dictates what goes on outside. Amen. So we get built up in here so when we go out there we look like Christ. Amen. So the church reason is the first what? Exalt upward, edify inward, and third, evangelize outward. Praise God. So we got upward magnifying the Lord, inward edifying the body of Christ to do the work of the ministry. Praise God. And third but not least, evangelize the world. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world. Remember, Jesus had poured into them by then. Jesus had edified. He had built them up. It was only 12 of them. Praise God. But the 12 turned into 70. In, 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 in Luke chapter 10, and then the 70 into 120. Praise God. It continued to grow. But there was some edifying that was going on. There was some building. There was some teaching. And he said, Go out in the world, and I want you to preach the gospel to every creature. That's how we get the body of Christ to grow. But first we got to, first of all, keep the main thing, the main thing. Exalt God upward. And then when we come in church, people see us with our Bibles out and with our pens and paper and say, man, they're really studying in church. They're not just going in church, jumping up and down and hollering. They try to learn something about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And then thirdly, they don't only come in church, praise God, they don't only come in church and read and write notes, but they leave the church talking about what they were talking about in church. Amen. Amen. Let's check our conversation Sunday. What's the first thing we say when we get outside? Amen. We'll know. And the purpose of the church is to glorify God, to build up believers, and to preach the gospel. This is a natural outward growth, on outgrowth of the first two reasons. If we're glorifying God and building up one another, we will naturally want to share the hope of salvation with others through the loving actions of our words. Today it was so plain to me. I was looking for something on Dr. King and I ran back across this mandate. I ran back across and God said, who told you to change this? Amen, because everything can fall underneath. Your praise and worship teams fall underneath the exaltation, right? Teachers and Sunday school and Bible study and evangelism fall under edifying. Amen. Under, under, under evangelizing um, new members class and, and discipleship classes and all the teaching that go for is to build up the saints and to perfect the saints. But then third but not least, to evangelize. To go out. And if those three things are being done, God is recognizing this church. Bottom line. And if God is recognizing this church, then this church is blessed. Amen. Amen. Remember in the Bible when he said this church, he said, you know, you, you were doing some great things. Amen. You was even fleeing all sin. Amen. Your name was mentioned and you were doing great things. But one thing you did, you forgot your first love. Amen. Amen. Anybody ever been there before? I've been there before. I've been there recently. Well, it seemed like I've lost my first love. Praise God. My love to, to evangelize. My love to tell everybody about Christ. Praise God. Not heated up like you used to be about the things of God. Praise God. So, those are the three things you want to function in. You want to begin to pray every night. Say, God, why, where should I be working at? Should I help those and set the atmosphere and help create the culture for worship and church and edifying? Praise God. Or, 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 an, or an exaltation. God, should I be, be one that's a teacher that helps to edify and to build up my brothers and sisters in Christ? Or God, am I an evangelist? Am I one that should be working outreach? So we kind of narrowed it down to three different areas in church that I think if all of us catch on fire, if we can get two or three people in each one of these areas to catch on fire, I think this church would be something that would be attractive. Amen? Amen. 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 So, reconciliation. We're going to go back to reconciliation. We was there in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Because I believe God wants us to reconcile. He wants us 
to use this ministry of reconciliation, which he used. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, if any man be in Christ, therefore, if, if by chance, if, therefore, as a result of, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. He's new. When do we become new? At the minute that he received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of his life, he become new. But what does he have to do to show that he's become new? He has to get in the book and find out what became new about him. Amen? And then the old stuff, you'll begin to begin to get convicted about it and praise God. Really, the last two months of this year, this is what I want your goal to be. Change. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Everywhere, let's, let's, let's scratch everything we ever learned about church. Why don't you just scratch everything you learned about church? For all your whole life is scratching right now. And from this day forth, praise God, I'm going to be edified the Lord. I'm going to exalt the Lord. I'm going to get built up. Amen. And I'm going to evangelize. Because this old me that was supposed to be a new me ain't getting it done. I'm going to be a, this, this, this new creature. Amen. Because I'm going to tell you, I'm my worst critic. You should be your worst critic. Amen. Every day you say, man, I could have did a little bit more. Yes. I could have did a little bit more. I mean, no, you could have did a little bit more. Yes. Amen. I could have shared a little bit more. Yes. Amen. You could have shared a little bit more. It's not condemning. This, what this is is the same thing I do next door. I push people and folks willing to fall out in the flow for a couple muscles. But to glorify God, we're going to do the same thing. Say amen, y'all. Yeah. And all things are of God. Watch this. Old things have passed away, and all things are become new. Watch this. And all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and has given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. Oh, ain't that something? God gave us something so valuable as the ministry of reconciliation. It's better than any car I can ever buy. Any home. You know what that means? That means that your estranged son or your estranged daughter or, or your cousin that's out there on drugs or your nephew that's out there in prison, you have the ability to reconcile him back to God in whatever condition that they're in. Boy, that's powerful, y'all. We got some stuff and some gifts, boy, that God has given us. That if we one day just sit down and meditate on it for 15 minutes, let nothing else come to our mind, we say, boy, we some bad mama mm -hmm. Boy, we can get some stuff done. And we're going to do it in this church. And I know it without a shadow of a doubt. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I didn't mess around and, and, and got back in this book the way that I should be in this book. And I apologize for not being in the book as much as I should. Sometimes your gifts, praise God, begin to just flounder and your gifts can go and, 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 and then you, you're just operating off your gifts. Amen. Praise God. Your gifts will make folks holler and scream, but your anointing will make folks change. It's the anointing that destroys the yoke. Somebody say, I want my anointing. I want to be anointed. Amen. Praise God. Watch this. To wit, God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. To wit, God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word reconciliation. Now, then, because of that, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. That's what we need to be crying out in the community, be reconciled unto God. Guess what? God didn't impute our sins, right? So we can't impute their sins. So we don't need to talk about the sin they're in. We need to talk about the answer to their sin, which is the grace of God. Amen? People want to hear about, how can I get out of this? I know where I'm at. How can I get out of this? Amen. So we have to embrace the ministry of reconciliation. Look up, I looked up embrace it means to accept or support. A belief, a theory, or change willingly and enthusiastically. Praise God. Are you, what, what, what is the last thing you, you've embraced? Praise God to the point that you've accepted it just like it is. You didn't want to add nothing to it or take anything away. You supported it with everything, with every time you got an opportunity to support you did. In theory, a belief, a theory, or change willingly and enthusiastically. So when it comes to, to ministry of reconciliation, we don't need to embrace 
new technology. We need to get back to old practices. I mean, believe that. In the Old Testament, man, they, 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 they read the Bible. And some kings like Josiah, be eight years old, begin to reign. The eighth year of his reign, about 16 years old. So he found the book. He just happened to be in the sanctuary and found the book. And he began to open up the book and he said, what well, this say is different from what y'all say. What this say is different from what's going on in the modern day church. So, 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 so he said, it's about time for sackcloth and ashes. It's time for us to rent our clothes. It's time for the church to repent. Praise God. And just based on the fact. But see, it all has, you know how valuable this is? Only as valuable as the person you believe that wrote it. If you don't believe God wrote it, you won't value it as God wrote it. Not the inspired written word of God, Brian. We'll read it and say it's just ink and paper. How many of you raise your hand and say this right here will change your life? So it's not just ink and paper then, right? Wow, it's not just ink and paper. Praise God. Everything that it says in here is true. Everything that says in here has power. The Bible says the word of God is sharper than a double-edged sword. Yes. It says it, it's sharper than a double-edged sword. It has the ability to go in and it appears people's heart. Amen. It's not my job to convict you. It's my job to give you the word. It's the Holy Ghost's job to convict the people. Yeah. Amen. It changed the hearts of the people. They asked this guy, Dr. Dr. Layman Breacher. They asked him. And he was asked, what was... What, what does he count to be the greatest thing human being can do? And, and this, this, this layman Besher, he said, the greatest thing a human, because he was asked, what is the greatest thing a human being can do? And he replied, the greatest thing a human being can do is to bring another human being to Jesus Christ as Savior. And I buy him a new car, and I buy him groceries, and, I, and all that we're supposed to do that too, because that helps people open up to receive the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But he said, the most powerful do that a person can do for a human is to bring another human to Jesus Christ. Remember I used to talk about no impact, no contact, no impact? If I don't contact the people, I can't impact the people. No contact, no impact. Praise God. So we talked about, you know, this change. Any man that be in Christ is a new creature. How old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. We realized last week on Sunday that every change that has taken place in our spirit, we realized that it was God's doing. How I many know it was God's doing? Everything that took place inside of you, Josh, it was God's doing. Brother Ellis, it was God's doing on the inside. That's why he said, for we are his workmanship created in Christ. Somebody said, in Christ. In Christ. We, need to keep that, we need to keep that thrust going right there. In Christ. Any man to be in Christ. He created us in Christ to be his workmanship. That means to be his partner. We are Christ's partner in work to redeem humanity. There is no sin or corruption in our born again spirit. I mean, you know that. So this key term in this, in this, in this 18th verse is reconciliation. So the dictionary states that to reconcile means to reestablish a close relationship between or settle or resolve. Somebody say reestablish. Reestablish a relationship. Praise God. We, we, we know that because in the garden last night, me and Brother Josh got a chance to go over to uh, uh, FCA in the port. And we talked about the power of a person's testimony. Praise God. So God used me an illustration in the garden. Man faced God face to face. But then Adam messed up in the garden and now his back was turned to God. But at Calvary, because what Jesus did to die for our sins, we're able to face God again. Amen. Amen. Cold illustration just used two people, but it was so powerful that, that now God can look them quick because he couldn't even look at us because sin stinks in his nostrils, right? Yeah. Matter of fact, why Jesus was on the cross, why did Jesus Christ say, Eli, Eli, Lama Why did he say that? Why did he say, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Praise God because of the sin that was on him. Praise God. Powerful. But because of Calvary, Man can now face God. Not only can man face God now, but he can come boldly to the throne of grace and he can find help in the time of need. Amen. Anybody need any help? Praise God. You know what we need to be crying out for help? Well, we need to begin to receive everything that God has done for us as Christians. And we need to say, God, I got mine. 
God, I need to go out here and get what you want me to get. I need to go out and reconcile people unto God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hmm. So, it's to reestablish a relationship between or to settle or to resolve. The key to reconciliation is effectively dealing with the enmity. The enmity. Anybody know what the enmity is? The enmity is war. Somebody said war. war. The ill will, the hatred, or the hostility that has caused the dispute. A lot of times, people always deal with the fruit in arguments. They always deal with the fruit of what has happened. Nobody ever deal with the root. So, God dealt with the reason that we beef with him. God dealt with the reason that he can't look at us. God dealt with the reason why we stink in his nostril. God dealt with it. But it's so cold. It was before Adam that he even dealt with it because the Bible proclaimed that there was a lamb that was slain before the foundation of this earth. So God already had this plan of deliverance in place. Yeah. Amen. Man, ain't that something? So watch this. You get into something now you think it's something you can't get yourself out of. Guess what? God has already, through Jesus Christ, already came up with a plan of deliverance for you to get out of that too. He said he gives you an avenue for an escape. Amen? Yes. But this ministry of reconciliation, when we look at it, and we look, we, we, we look at the fact that, that, that the key of reconciliation is dealing with the war or the ill will or the hatred or the hostility that has caused dispute. Amen? When you look at it, though, there's several approaches to reconciliation. It may apply. For instance, you know, like if somebody, uh, by unkind word, we've spoken. So, so somebody can say something bad about you, and we can solve that by by apologizing. Somebody owe you money, right? Then they pay you money, and they resolve that. So that was the issue. It was the money that caused the war in between you. It was made the ill will of what you got mad. Praise God. Amen. But every case, and in every case, reconciliation lies. And dealing effectively with the root cause of the war. Amen. Somebody say, man, I keep doing the same thing. I keep expecting different results. They call that what? Insanity. I got to realize that I keep wanting to do that. That's why I keep doing that. I don't keep doing that because I don't want to do it. I keep doing that because I keep wanting to do that. So I got to deal with why do I want to do that? Amen. Why do I want to snap off? Why do I want to always say something? Why do I want to always have the last word? Yeah. Amen. But in the text of what we're talking about contextually, God was dealing with one issue. And one is issue is a three-letter word called sin. Yeah. That's the only thing that caused God to have beef with us, Brother Shea. Yes, Amen. 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 So the enmity between man and God was sin. But God took the initiative to remove that barrier through the means and the agency of Jesus Christ, thus leaving man and God as friends. Once again, somebody say, he our friend. Somebody say, I am a friend of God. What is about problem, man? Through the agent of Jesus Christ, I now can be called a friend of God. Who is that? Is that just like a friend next door? My buddy, best friend, Bob, who is that just a friend right there joining with my friend? Oh, that's my next door neighbor? No, this friend is the creator and the ruler of the universe. He speaks and man lay down. He speaks and man get back up again. Yes. He spits red seas. He takes clouds and makes clouds yes. follow people. <laughs> Amen. This is the God we're talking about. Yes. They make clouds follow people at a certain time. Amen. Have perfect atmospheric conditions in the heat of the day, 100 degrees weather, but they're walking around with air conditioning. Cloud over them. That's God. He's your friend. He loves you. And it happened through the ministry of reconciliation. We should show people that we're excited about being a friend of God. And they'll want to become a friend of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. It was that barrier. Praise God. So when you look at the word justification, because when you talk about reconciliation, you talk about justification, man. So justification, praise God, an awesome illustration is a criminal before a judge with a judge pronouncing a sentence of acquittal. So, so, so that's what justification is, just as if I never did it. So the judge is pronouncing acquittal. Shay, you did all that sin, but you get a, a chance to go free. You don't get a chance to go to hell. You get a chance to go to hell. That's acquittal. Amen? Amen? But in reconciliation, man, look at this different picture. You think about a, a, an estranged child before his father with an alienation now replaced 
by peace. This alien nation now replaced by peace due to its constant love, but it takes the initiative, breaks into man's hostility, and throws down every barrier to their enduring in the marvelous relationship. So God went in there and tore down the hostility. He was mad at something, but he went and took care of what he was mad at. Man, that's powerful, man. That is so powerful. He took care of what was keeping us between, that was keeping him from talking to us and loving us and healing us and forgiving us. He took that barrier away. The Bible says the veil was rent from top to bottom. Now, those of us in the Old Testament, we, I wouldn't want to be a priest. You go into the Holy of Holies and you ain't right. You ain't coming out. But by stream, they're going to drag you out. Man, boy, there was one priest that went into the holy, the holies of holies one time. Yeah. <laughs> His name is Jesus Christ. To redeem humanity, to redeem you and I. Yeah. The Bible says now because we don't have a high priest that can be touched with our infirmities, we have not a high priest. Meaning we don't have a Christ that can't be touched with what we're going through. Yeah. But he was tempted in every area that we were, but yet he was without sin. That gives us the permission to come boldly to the throne of grace to find help in the time. And it, Jesus is telling us that I know what you're going through. So as we minister to the people with the ministry of reconciliation, we need to tell them, I know what you're going through. Maybe I haven't did it, but my, 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 my Savior, Jesus Christ, was tempted in every area, but yet he was without sin. He has the ability to get you through what you're going through. Amen. Amen. How many believe that? Amen. 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 He tore down. So God takes initiative. Man merely responds. That's all you do. Somebody say, I just respond. I just, respond. just a positive response. That's all faith is, a positive response to what God already did. My prayers are turned from God, do this, do this, do this. No, no. My prayers are turned more into thank you, Lord God. Yes. Thank you. I can't pray thank you for redeeming Michigan City, but I don't go out and try to do what it takes to redeem Michigan City. What is power right there? Redeem this city in the name of Jesus. Oh, but to be all right. Go to the crib and make some coffee. You know. <laughs> save this city. Okay, let's go. It's only one thing necessary to save the city. Preach another gospel. I'm back. back, you back. We, get, we back, y'all. Amen. We're back square one. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Preach the gospel and leave the consequences up to God. Amen. Amen. All this other extra stuff. Yeah. It's our doing, my doing. I forgot, I'm going to say it again. I apologize again. That's my doing. Amen. God said, teach the people that it's necessary to share their faith. Amen. We was in FCA last night. And, 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 and we talked about testimonies last night and the effectiveness of your personal testimony. And at the end, you know, and I know, and they don't know, and many folks don't know, about 30 of them. 25 of them, 27 of them, 30 of them stood up and gave their life to the Lord. Amen. Oh, man. The Bible says they rejoiced in heaven over one that was repented. I don't know, maybe it was one, but you know what? God, heaven, jumped up and down and one out of all 30 of them gave their life to the Lord. We caught up in the numbers, ain't it? God ain't heaven. Ain't. Heaven says if there's one person that repents, the whole heaven going to have a party. Guess what? When you came to the Lord, there was a party for you. Amen. Praise God. So God took the initiative. We got to take the initiative to go down and tear down the barrier. You know how you tear down the barrier of sin? Sin is a root from selfishness. So when we go and talk to the people about a selfless Jesus Christ, it makes us think about being so selfish. Go talk to the people about a, a selfless Christ who died and shed his blood for them in the middle. Watch this. The Bible says that when we were without strength, Christ died for them. He didn't wait till you jumped up and came to church. You didn't even bring yourself. I didn't bring myself to church. I'm sorry you didn't. The Bible says there's none that seek after me. If you're seeking him, it's because he put a seek in your yes, seeker. Yes, Lord. Oh. And he said, come unto me, because you have got heavy laden and you have got burden. He said, come unto me. Yes. Right. Yes. And I'll give you some rest. Take, take, take my yoke and learn yes. to me, because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Yes. 
Talking about our Heavenly Father, y'all. Talking about Jesus Christ, our Lord and our personal Savior. That's how you came to Christ. Amen. We're sitting in here because he called you. Jesus said, all that the Father has given me shall come. That's powerful. That's election. That's foreknowledge. All that the Father has given me shall come, and I will in no wise cast them out. We got a problem. The world has a problem with this, psychology and sociology. They have a problem with the sovereignty of God. God, watch this. Thank you, Father. God, right? Sometimes we got a problem with, with the way God do things. But you ain't got no problem with the fact that you got ten toes and ten fingers. You ain't got a problem with the fact you, you, you can talk and you can walk. And you, 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 you may, we won't have a problem with that part of his creation. But we have a problem with the other part of creation that is in conflict, right, with his law and with his order. We got a problem with that sovereign part because it don't make sense to this human ear. We got a, but I ain't got no problem with the fact that I'm healthy. You got a problem that you got a job. He the one created that too. Problem is, people think they created that. I created an, 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 an avenue for income in my own life. I got, I got a degree. I went and got a job. Boom. It's me. God empowered us and gave us the strength to go do what we do. Yes. Yes. Amen. It's very powerful, y'all. Yeah? Yeah. It's very powerful what God <laughs> is trying to get to us through my broken self. I'm nobody. He talking to us through me. Amen. Right? Yeah. And he telling us, amen, that I'm sovereign and I can do what I want to do. Why do y'all got a problem with that? You didn't have a problem that I created your mom and daddy, and so you here. We don't have a problem with the new job we just got. We don't have a problem with, with the money that we found that we just got. Somebody told us that it was a misplacement of money, and somebody had told us that you have an inheritance. Praise God, you, you have an inheritance. Somebody called you and tell your mother died. We have a problem. Oh, that's God. But when God says that we need to go out, and remove the barriers that's between people that are out there in those streets that are hurting. Kids, that we need to move that barrier. We say, oh, that's for somebody else. Wow. Somebody say, that's for me. That's for me. Amen. Amen. How many know God is the subject of reconciliation? Man is the object of reconciliation. God is the subject of reconciliation. And man is the object. God does the reconciling. Man is the one who is reconciled. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Father God. So, 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 so this guy by the name of William F. Beck translated this verse the following way. But God has done it all. When we were his enemies through Christ, he made us friends and gave us the work of making friends of enemies. Boy, that's crazy. That's, that's crazy right there. I'm going to say that one more time. <laughs> It's talking about he giving us the ministry of reconciliation. God was in Christ reconciling the world, giving us the ministry of reconciliation. Praise God. It's verse 18. Let's get it up there, Brother John. Amen. We well, ain't gonna get it up there today, okay? All right, move right along. I'm gonna get it right here. <laughs> technology somebody say technology ain't gonna stop us. Amen. Don't stop. Don't stop. First Corinthians. Again, second Corinthians. Five. Amen. Eighteen. And, it, and, and all things are God who has reconciled us unto himself, right, by Jesus Christ. And has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Amen. So, he said, but God has done done it all. Somebody said, God done it all. Boy, that's it. Man. I mean, you ain't nothing to do with it but say yes. Right? Guess what? Why don't we say, why, ain't those, why, 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 aren't, why aren't the people in the world saying yes? We got to give them something to say yes to we got to give them an alternative to the worldly system. Jesus didn't hate the sinner. He hated the system. Amen. So when we were enemies through Christ, he made us his friends and gave us the work of making friends out of enemies. Ain't that something? We was enemies. Now we're friends. Now we can go make enemies friends. Ain't that good? Wow, man. God is awesome, man. So we received the ministry of reconciliation. That means that, that we are the ministers of reconciliation. We, we have the ministry of reconciling people to God. Amen. Amen. 
But much of what people are calling the gospel today is actually alienating people from God. What people call the gospel today is shape alienating people from God. I don't want to have nothing to do with your self righteous talking about me, self. Or amen. Or praise God. So dogmatic. Pray, we got to tell people about sins because you cannot preach the gospel without mentioning sin. You have to. But God gives wisdom. And if you lack it and you keep running into dead ends and you keep running into brawls all the time, you spread the gospel, don't act like it's them all the time. Sometimes I have to go back and ask for wisdom to how to approach different people. Amen. 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 If we're going to reconcile and get equipped, God equipping us right now. It's just like we're in orientation right now. Reconciliation, orientation. Pray you got a job at the reconciliation um, substation. Praise God. And our job in here is reconciling people unto God. We're sitting in here, we got a three day orientation, and He's going to teach us how to reconcile. In that class, wisdom would be involved. How do I minister to people that don't look like me, don't act like me, didn't grow up like I did? The wisdom of God. Pray. Ask the Lord, and He'll give us the wisdom. Right? Amen. Amen. So. So this promise is to those that are in Christ. Romans 3 and 24 saying, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. That's Romans 3 and 24. To understand reconciliation, if any man be in Christ, the way you got in Christ is that you were justified. How? I paid $10,000. No, no. You were justified free. I mean, you were let off the hook with no attorney. Amen. You didn't go pay the attorney fees. Praise God. Public defender scary thing in court these days. Amen. Public defender scary. Amen. You know what public defender is? Like somebody in the streets telling me that you're going to be all right even in the mess that we in. Huh? Like Geico. Yeah, Geico. <laughs> Being freely justified by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Somebody say, I got rescued. I got rescued. Because Jesus rescued me. He threw out a lifeline for you, Brother Shane. He was about ready to go to prison. Brother Say said he was one phone call away from 10 years. But guess what? It was because the plan of God before he turned to be free from eternity past. Yeah. In the six days that God created everything, he said, Brother Say would not take that call. Yeah. Because he's not going to have a prison ministry and prison is not going to be a part of his testimony. Amen. Amen. That's God based on his foreknowledge. Yeah. Amen. Wasn't so smart not to pick up the call. Amen. Because all his friends picked up the phone and all of them got 10. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, we got redemption. So these are some of the promises of us that are in Christ. So I want, I want to give you these. For one, you got redemption. You've been redeemed freely. Next, you have no condemnation. So realize this. It's people that make me and you all feel like we ain't been justified. Because we measure ourselves up against ourselves. And the Bible says this is not wise. Man. No, everything that looks like it's right ain't right. And everything that looks like it's wrong ain't wrong. Either. The natural man perceives not the things of God. What he's doing or what she's doing may be an exact thing God's going to use to get them to get to him. Amen? So there's no condemnation, right? We're talking about in Christ. So the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, then there's no condemnation. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Mind you, y'all, it's in Christ. Somebody says, in Christ. in Christ. In Christ. Number three, there's no separation. Romans chapter 8, verse 39. Nor height, nor depth, nor any creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Nothing can separate us from the love of God that's in the streets. No. Which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That love is in Jesus. Amen, because God is in Jesus, because God is love. So you find that love in Jesus, because God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, but he said, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. God's love is in Christ. 
Somebody say sanctification. <laughs> sanctification. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 1 and 2. 1 Corinthians 1 and 2. Sanctification. Unto the church of God, which is at Corinth. This is Paul talking to the church of Corinth. To them that are sanctified in Jesus Christ. What does that look like? It's the only being sanctified in Jesus Christ. Set apart. Amen. Bottom line. Set apart in Christ. Amen. Is Christ or not Christ? Is Christ or Antichrist? Amen. Jesus said you're either what for me or you what? You're against me. Amen. So we in Christ. We're in Christ. Sanctified. Called to be saints with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Both theirs and ours. I like this, man, because you begin to talk about the stuff that you have in Christ, and man, life don't look that bad. Yeah, I've been redeemed. That means I've been rescued. What you been rescued from? Not necessarily just drugs and dope and sex. That ain't not necessarily that. You've been rescued from a burning hell. So, and there's no condemnation that comes along with it. Even though God knew what you did, he still loved you enough to call you out of that darkness into the marvelous light. But then there's no separation. Nothing should be able to separate us from the love of God. Then we have sanctification. We've been set apart. Then we got victory. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14. We got victory. Amen. I like to think that if we don't have any private victories, you don't have any public victories. David had to do the simple stuff before he could kill Goliath. He had to tip the sheep. He had to do exactly what he had. He had to kill that bear. He had to do the simple stuff when nobody was looking in order for God to put him on the platform to kill Goliath. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But the Bible says this about us in Christ Jesus. Now, faith be unto God, 2 Corinthians 2 and 14, which always causes us to triumph. We're at in Christ and make it manifest the Savior of his knowledge by us in every place. Not only that, somebody said we got liberty. So I got victory, I got sanctification, there's no separation. But understand it, don't mess it, don't, don't, in, that, in your Bible, in Christ, write that, write that, highlight it, in Christ. All this is in Christ. We got liberty. Galatians chapter 2, verse 4. Amen. And that because a false brother, in other words, brought us who came in privately to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ. They came to spy out your liberty. Amen. I mean, no folks is trying to spy out your liberty. Amen. Amen. Why, why is she so free? Amen. Well, why is he so free, which is in Jesus Christ, that they might bring us into bond? People don't like seeing you free. So they came to spy on you, to catch you up, so they can put you back in bondage. But guess what? God said there's no condemnation. So he covered the spies. <laughs> so, so the spies still doing their spy. Right? And God and the devil still doing his lying. And God is still justifying people every day. Because he loves us that much. He loves us that much, brother. Brian, he loves us that much. Amen. Whole Bible is a love story written to you personally. Get in and open up and put your name in there. Not Abraham. Believe God. Ronnie, believe God. It was a counterfeit of your righteousness. Ronnie. Levan staggered not at the promise of God. He staggered in other things, but the promises he didn't stagger. But it was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Amen. Josh said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it's the power of God. Unto salvation. Put your name in there because he wrote it for us. Amen. Amen. But people coming to spy out our privacy or our liberty so they can bring us back into bondage again. That's what you do. The next time people tell you about your past, about your past, that's what you do. You do what Paul did. Say, I'm glad. I tell them, oh, yeah, boy, you crazy. You jump on them. Man, you was crazy. You used to do crazy stuff. You used to do crazy stuff. And sometimes when you tell them, man, I'm glad you remember. Because I forget. That's what you got to tell me sometimes. Forgetting those things that are in the past. And 
pressing forward to the mark of the high calling that's in Christ Jesus. Amen. If we knew that following Christ was a win-win, all our decisions would change tonight. If we knew it was a win-win and there's no chance of defeat in Christ, your decisions would change tonight. Amen. If we believe that every word in this Bible, I said we, God talking to us up in here. If we believe everything in here was written for us and it will work, the Bible said it isn't Thessalonians. He said the word effectually worketh in those that believe. We always think this stuff ain't real because it ain't working. God said it ain't working, go on believe. He said it effectually worketh in you that believe. Thessalonians. Praise God. I think it's 2 and 13. Let me see if I can find it. Praise God. I used to quote it every time but before I preached. What did I say? 2 and 13. Yeah. For this cause we thank God without ceasing because when you receive the word which you heard of us. Watch this. You receive the word from us. You received it not as the word of man. That's the problem right there. You think Riley said it. He ain't smart enough. Big black crazy dude. He can't even be that smart. It wasn't Riley that said it. But when they received it, they didn't get it from Riley because you can see Riley's flaws. So you ain't going to get it, right? But they received it as it was the word of God that effectually worketh in you that believe. That's powerful right there. Amen. That is real powerful right there. We always look, if it come out of here, God said it. Now God is smart enough and loving enough, and he, but he's also a God that's going to deal with what needs to be dealt with. He'll let me preach all y'all to heaven and take me straight to hell. If I'm, cut, if, I'm, if I'm messed up like that. If I'm out here just preaching the gospel, but I'm all jacked up. Amen. Because he called me to do what I do. He's going to get his work out of you. Amen. I tell you, you ain't not going to stop the mailman and run him down talking about you old drunk mailman. You take this back to Nipsco. I ain't paying this. They're going to tell you, all right, mailman going to stack and say, okay, I'll take it on back. And that day, when they say he's going to turn it off, it's going to be turned off. Because the message said, pay your bill. The messenger was messed up. Not condoning messed up messengers. But it's just telling you, this word will effectually work in you if you believe it. Amen. Amen. He said, you believe it, not as the word for men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh. And the word worketh, E-T-H, whenever you see that, that means it's a continuum. He that believeth, that means he that keep on believing, worketh also in you that believe. Well, powerful scripture, y'all. Powerful scripture. Amen. So we got liberty, we got unity, we got victory, no separation. We got unity, we got spiritual blessings. Ephesians 1 and 3, bless the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. We think we need to get hands laid on us to get blessed spiritual blessings. Amen. No. He gave all these spiritual blessings. They are in heavenly places. Where are they at though? They in Christ Jesus, who has already blessed us. With all spiritual blessings in heavenly place. Everything you need to live out your Christ Christian life is already in you. In Christ Jesus. If Christ be for you, he's more than the whole world against you. Amen. We see it in heavenly places. Sometimes I don't think we understand our position. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. Where are you sitting at right now? I'm sitting to the world, sitting in the blue chair. Well, if God says different, he said you're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. My, my body is right here. My body here with me, but mine's on the other side of town. Mess me up. Well, I, <laughs> your spirit man is sitting on the right hand of the throne in Christ Jesus. Amen. That's right. Or else he wouldn't have said it. If the Bible tells one lie, it's going to blow up. The world going to be on. God says it's impossible for me to lie. Amen. Amen. You know what's going to be powerful when you go out and we begin to reconcile people? They're going to say, how could a person that do all that sin believe all that stuff that he's saying? And they begin to see the fruit of your life and see you bearing fruit in people's lives changing because your life changes. They're going to scratch their head sooner than and say, there may be some truth to that stuff. And it's not our job to find out who is and who ain't. Man, I promise it ain't. Just preach the gospel and tell people that Christ loves you and he wants to reconcile you. 
And then they ask you about liberty. You say, man, I'm freer than I ever used to be. Because I remember I used to wonder where, where, where I wake up at in the morning. Where, where was I going to be? In the jail or in the bed? And I had no business in. And I'd be real, I used to wonder where, where, where I would be at. Amen. Praise God, I don't have to do that no more. I know if I go to bed in my bed, I'm going to wake up in my bed. I ain't going to have that hangover I used to have. Praise God. They going to be reeking for when I go to work. Thank God for it, man. I ain't condoning nobody to do anything, but man, that stuff was killing me. I'd have got closer to the level before I got cancer. If I had to stop, amen, I'm seated in heavenly places. I'm creating in the good works in Christ Jesus. That's Ephesians chapter 2 and 10. Seated in heavenly places, that's Ephesians 2 and 6. I'm brought near to God in Ephesians 2 and 13, but now in Christ Ye who were sometime afar off were made not by the blood of Jesus Christ. Man, that's a lot of stuff, man, but it's in Christ. Amen. Any man to be in Christ is a new creature. We've been reconciled. We've been redeemed. We have victory. We have, we have, we, we seated in heavenly places in Jesus Christ. That's why we pray that kingdom come, that will be done. We don't pray from earth to heaven. We pray from heaven to earth. Know your position. Know where we see it because of reconciliation, y'all. You got encouragement. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. In Christ. All this stuff I'm giving you is in Christ. Got encouragement. Since the Lord is in Christ. You got the resurrection. Poof. <laughs> got the resurrection. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 16. Amen. We shall not all sleep. Praise God. We're not going to all sleep. But the trumpet is going to sound. And the dead in Christ going to rise first. And those that remain going to be caught up to meet them mm -hmm. in the sky. Praise God. Not only that, we're going to have salvation. It's in Christ. Encouragement in Christ. Resurrection in Christ. Salvation in Christ. Amen. But see, you can take all these basic components and you can use them individually, right? So they all come in the gift, one box, Christ. But there's many gifts in there. So when you talk about resurrection, you realize that the spirit of him that raised him up from the dead, you may have a dead marriage, you may have a dead relationship, you may have some dead things going on in your life. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead will also quicken your mortal body. What that means, it'll make you alive about the situation. And you come alive. Amen. So, any man that be in Christ is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Everything I've told you that you have since 10, everything that I've told you while I'm teaching today, you already got it. It's already in you. It's already in you. For it says, for we are his workmanship, created, where were we created at? In Christ. That's why Paul is able to say, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Wait a minute, Paul. You come a long time after Jesus Christ died. How could you be crucified with Christ? Because I was created in Christ. I've been crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Not I, but the Christ that lived in me. And the life that I now live. I live through the faith in the Son who gave his life for me. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your word. Amen. And with God himself working in our lives, you to give us reconciliation. Amen. Amen. Old things have become new. So, it was God at work doing something in you. It's a world that's different than that we've known in the past. Yeah. It's a different world, ain't it? It's a different world, man. Different world. I won't go back to the other world. That it crossed over and did things that I did in the world. The boy ain't nothing. Been convinced in another state. Man. <laughs> told the dude before he told me, man, man, I done that church thing, bro. I already know how y'all do that, bro. I know how y'all get out. You know, about that money. So said, no, God will give you ability to create your own economy. He will. And he'll come to you and they'll give you money. So that you can not so seek into the kingdom. No, it ain't about money. I ain't talking about the church. I was talking about the gym. I was talking about speaking in different places, going places. God give you ability to create the economy too. So that you can live a great life. Praise God. So that you can pay your bills, take care of your kids, and do things. I ain't against prosperity. But I believe you got to be prosperous.
prosperous spiritually before you need to be prosperous financially. Yes. Because if so, you give a fool money, what are you going to do? A fool in the money soon part. I ain't never been about saving no money before I got saved. The basic principle of sowing and reaping. I said, I got to save something, got to give something, got to spend something. I learned how to save money in the Bible. Saved more money than I ever have saved in my life before. When I was in the street making thousands, I couldn't save as much money as I did. Praise God when I got saved and just did it the biblical way. Save something, give something, spend something. Amen. Praise God. Be not deceived. God is not mine. Whatever you sow, you shall also reap. It's another life over here. It's a life over here that we should be desiring to live. We should be dying to live. Yes. Amen. Dying daily. Crucified yes. with Christ. Nevertheless, I live not I but the Christ that liveth in me. Old things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. You know why a student that go to college and go to class get a diploma? Because he went. You know the person that go to church and get the material and go out and try it? Why he victorious? Because he went to class. And he found out what he had. We find it out in here, and that's what we're going to do from here on through this minute. We're going to find out what we have in Christ, and we're going to find out how to pragmatically walk it out. What does that mean? We're going to find out how to make this stuff work. Amen. And it works very easily. Follow Christ. Right? And actually, if you die to self, he'll walk it out for you. You might say, I've been reconciled. I've been reconciled unto God. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, we just thank you for a night of sharing.